my morning drink. A delicious and wonderful ritual for sure. What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about drinks. What are my go-to drinks on a daily basis to stay eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, and rosacea free for life? I'm gonna be breaking down the drinks into several different categories. One, the drinks that I have on a daily basis, pretty much every single day, like this one right here. Gonna talk about the drinks I have often, but not every single day. Gonna talk about a couple drinks that I'm still kind of testing and not totally sure on if they're good or bad for me personally. Gonna be talking about alcohol. What alcohol do I drink? How often do I drink? Do I even drink? And which types of alcohol do I completely avoid? And then probably the most important part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the drinks and the types of drinks I never, ever, ever drink. And the list that is gonna be most holistic in nature is gonna be the drinks that I never drink. This list comes from both my own experience being healed of eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis, and from the huge block of people. I've worked with over 1,500 people at this point. And it's a meta-analysis of the drinks that do not allow them to heal. So the never drink list will be an important one and a big one. Let's get to it. Quick reminder before I start getting into my drink list. These are the drinks that I've tested and work great for me. Some of these drinks that I'm gonna mention that I use specifically for myself may not work perfectly for you and you do have to go through a little bit of customization and personalization and experimenting to see what all foods and what all drinks do to you personally through the use of your biofeedback and biomarkers. On a daily basis, I really only drink three drinks. Drink number one, and this happens I would say five days out of the week, so I'm putting this in my daily category, is this bad boy. Raw cream, and I'll get to some specifics about that in a second, mixed with matcha green tea latte, turned into a high fat, high calorie drink. Now, for any of you guys who are going to experiment and try out things like full fat dairy, understand there's a huge difference between cream and butter and regular milk. Also, there's a huge, drastic, monumental difference between sourcing quality butter and cream and the crap that you can buy in the convenience store that isn't even real cream, it isn't even real milk. The cream that I get is raw, it's local, it's from Jersey cows that produce K1, A1 and K2 milk. So it's proper sourced milk and cream works perfectly for me. The other thing that I drink on a daily basis besides this cream drink is spring water. And what do I mean by spring water? I mean literally water from a spring. Where I'm at right now, I can't really source it, so I just buy bottled spring water that's sourced directly from the ground with nothing put in it. But anytime I have the option, I will go out into nature and find a spring. There's a couple websites that can point you in the right direction where to find natural springs bring a big glass container, fill it up, and that is by far the best water of choice I've ever used. When I lived in Mount Shasta, I was drinking the Headwaters, which is basically the spring that starts the Sacramento River, and it comes up through Mount Shasta, through volcanic rock, and it's, it's the cleanest, best water I've ever tasted. The third drink that I drink on a daily basis is, and this is kind of my treat, this will happen maybe with my last meal of the day or as a little treat at the end of the day is Zevia. It's just basically sparkling carbonated water with some stevia in it. And again, that's kind of my treat. That's it. That's all I pretty much drink on a regular basis. I like to drink water. I like to have my cream in the morning and I keep it as simple as possible. Next on the list is Drinks that I have sometimes, and not very often, some of these drinks I used to drink every day, and sometimes during certain stretches of time, I will drink these three drinks pretty much very often, but on a regular basis, on average throughout the year, bone broth, and I'm talking just well-sourced or homemade bone broth, turmeric lemonade, um, and not Zevia, but sparkling water. I sometimes go through little phases where I'll do like Pellegrino 
on a daily basis, but then I kind of get bored of it and just go back to regular spring water and Zevia at night. So those are the drinks I have often. Uh, for those of you who don't know what turmeric lemonade is, it's just lemon, turmeric, and water mixed together. It's kind of a nice morning autophagy focused drink. Now, what about the drinks that I'm not totally sure on for myself that I do have here and there and still kind of testing? Now, as I was saying, when I was talking about cream and my daily drink, I have experimented a lot with raw milk. And raw milk is one of those that if I have a little bit, I'm good to go, nothing happens. It actually tastes and feels really good in my body. Um, but I am someone who likes to keep my carb intake low, so raw milk from properly sourced, pastured, A1, K2 producing Jersey cows, it's kind of hard to find. Um, but when I do, I will drink it. Now, if I overdo the milk, if I'm drinking half a gallon a day, if I'm drinking, you know, 1500 calories of milk on a daily basis, um, then I've had weird digestional stuff, but nothing has ever really come up with my skin as far as the raw milk. Now, raw milk is definitely something I think people should give a try. But again, I have to stress this. If you're not sourcing it pastured, local if possible from the right cows and raw, mm, I think that milk is just something to skip now to go into it a little bit further why does milk not work and kind of work for some people but cream full fat no carbohydrate no sugar cream and butter works so well for the skin health community it's because there's no lactate and lactose in the all fat versions of the dairy again you source the dairy from the right sources source from the right sources and you're good to go Okay, alcohol. Alcohol for me is pretty straightforward. I don't drink very often, and when I do, I know which ones to avoid and which ones will work for me. So for me personally, and for most of the clients that I've worked with who've had long-term success selling their skin, the clear liquors like gin and vodka work really good. Also, Prosecco, which I know that there's debate, is Prosecco sparkling wine or is Prosecco actually champagne? I don't know, I don't care. That's not my thing, but Prosecco, labeled Prosecco, seems to be totally good to go um, as far as a skin safe alcohol for myself. Again, you have to test these things. Now, which alcohols are the absolute worst and which ones should you avoid? Beer is really bad. Dark colored liquors, tequila, wine, pretty much across the board, especially red wine. White wine seems to be a little easier, but red wine is a major trigger. Mixed drinks with all of their soda and all of the sugar and all of the fruit and all of the crap in it, absolutely no good. And honestly, if you are in your first year of trying to heal your skin, which it generally takes about a year for people to go through the process of everything, you probably should avoid alcohol altogether. I know the year that I healed my skin, I was totally alcohol free. All right, now let's get to probably the most important list on this list of drinks is the ones that I will never drink and the ones that for the clients that I've worked with and the people that I've worked with in the past and currently um, have absolutely no luck with and they kind of wreck all of the systems that we're trying to heal, the digestion, the filtration system, the hormonal systems. So here's the list. Despite the popularity, especially it's a growing prop popularity, um, powdered green superfood drinks, I will never touch. They're absolutely horrible on digestion. They really don't provide for you the nutrients that they claim to do. Um, and anytime you have isolated foods that are turned to powder and then mixed with other isolated nutrients that are turned to powder, um, it's the opposite of what you're going for. Along those, along those same lines, some drink that I will never ever have is things like protein shakes, especially the vegan ones. Absolutely horrible for digestion. Absolutely not a good source of liquid hydration or nutrients at all. And this one will be confusing to you guys and probably kind of a bummer to some of you, but 99.9%, .9%, so almost all of the cold pressed cleansing juices that people promote, especially in the plant-based and vegan world, are absolute garbage and are actually trigger foods for skin disease. So if you are doing cold pressed or you're doing juices as a way to heal yourself, you most likely are doing yourself more damage than good. There are some specific juices, and that's why it's 99.9, .9, that do work really good, like the turmeric lemonade for some people, celery juice, 
for some people, something like a cucumber, ginger, cilantro, um, but all of the stuff that involves kale and spinach and all these leafy greens and all of this fruit sugar, just a major trigger food and should be avoided. Coffee, avoid. Black tea, avoid. Chai tea, avoid. Any drink that has cacao in it, no good. All and every variety of regular soda pop, Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, and all the diet versions are absolute no good for skin health. And here's another one that comes from the vegan world, and this is something I, the, a big mistake that I used to make almost constantly, and, and you do still see this perpetuated with Instagram fitness gurus and YouTube fitness gurus all over the place, and generally it's to trick you into buying their crappy products, but people love to tout smoothies, blended fruit and kale and broccoli and green powder and 5,000 different ingredients. If you have a food that has more than one or two ingredients, it's probably not something that you want to eat. How many ingredients are in a steak? Mm, just steak. How many ingredients are in lamb? Mm, just lamb. How about salmon? Mm, just salmon. But how about some of these healthy smoothies that people are promoting? Bananas and blueberries and kale and green. It's like absolute garbage. And the pre-digested sugar fiber based anti-nutrient rich plant toxin rich smoothies are basically giving you a huge package of gut health issues in a very concentrated form. So that's it. That's my list of liquids and drinks ranging from my daily to sometimes to I'm not sure to alcohol to and you heard it. That's the list of never ever drinks for me. Now I'm someone who's had a lot of success because I've taken the time to customize my entire approach. And for me, I know what foods work, I know what foods are neutral, and I know what foods are really gonna be trigger and a mess long term. And those are the foods on my never to drink list. Questions and comments, leave them down below. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. If your feelings are hurt because you're basically drinking all the foods on the never list, well, you might need to start the customization process really soon. I wish you guys a lot of luck. For those of you who are looking to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there's a link in the description box for a consultation. There's also a link for the three phases workbook, which has some liquids in it. And it's a custom, customized version of how to personalize the entire healing process, diet, cleansing, detox, lifestyle, three phases workbook. Also down in the description box, it's not a drink, it's a probiotic. And it's the one I take pretty much every single day. And it's the one that gives my clients the best results with the health of their skin. It's called Skinessa, link in the description box. That's gonna do it for me today, guys. I'm gonna get back to drinking my creamy matcha latte. Have a good one.